users list uh, stuff with volumes basically paytm is up 2% it's the biggest volume led gainer uh, is 635 abhishek has been telling us the reasons uh, why paytm should be in focus hindalco is up 2% 3 all 398 actually on hindalco and you got page industries which is up 1 and 1/2% as well uh, i can spot pnc infra with a 5% spot kpit tech and policy bazaar are some of the others which are uh, there in that 1 and 1/2 2% uh, range uh, at this point in time market breadth is positive by about 100 150 odd stocks it was deeply negative from the word go the, uh, earlier yesterday which is not the case right now uh, 35 points on the uh, index our market master of the day is sanjeev prasad managing director and co-head at kotak institutional equity sanjeev good to have you with us here thank you very much for your time uh, just start I want to start by asking you whether with the uh, correction that we've seen valuations are back in fair zone at a, at least at a aggregate index level nifty level yeah you're right valuations are about 18 times on a 12 months forward basis so yeah valuations are looking somewhat more reasonable i would say having said that you still have uh, risk of earnings uh, downgrades going forward particularly in the discretionary space uh, given the fact that uh, the slowdown is for real and from whatever we are picking up it looks like it could extend from the two to uh, four quarters so uh, yes you have some downward risk also to earnings uh, and they said that you know uh, probably valuations probably matter less at this point in time what matters more is you know how the sentiment is panning out there is just so much of confusion out there in terms of you know the news flow uh, on the one side you have a lot of financial instability in the world on the other hand you still have high inflation you know so the central banks are struggling to balance the two and then you have also also you know potential negative news in india in terms of you know possibly a not so great uh, monsoon this time around so there's just too much of you know news out there which will probably act as a damper on the market for the time being despite the what uh, reasonable valuations are there hmm all right uh, well you know i wanted your thoughts uh, sanjeev on how to approach it now um slew of resignations of course a lot of concerns about a slowdown in growth and redu- reduction in client spends and impending us recession all of that is not boding well in fact this month itself names like infi wipro etc are down about 6 to 8% uh, do you see more pressure well i don't think the it stocks will do much in the current environment you have still a lot of uncertainty with respect to the demand environment uh, first we have to wait and see how quickly the you know the us financial system stabilizes given the fact that uh, bfsi is a very large segment for the it companies you have a lot of issues in europe also at the same time so any it company which have exposure to high bfi uh, bsfi if uh, like and uh, europe clearly you know there are uh, overhang as far as uh, growth is concerned so as of now for most of the it company we're building in about you know uh, let's say high single digit uh, uh top end growth uh, i suspect you could possibly see 2 to 3% you know percentage point big shift off from there given a possibly uh, slower demand environment uh, most of the banks would more focused on you know managing the balance sheet rather than you know giving out uh, orders at this point in time so decision making etc will be fairly uh, slow so at least the first half of uh, the next financial year fy24 looks like a very very slow period as far as it sector is concerned and on top of that if you look at the valuation in most cases there are somewhat still higher than pre covid levels so i suspect you still need to see some more derating uh, as far as the stocks are concerned multiples are concerned and you will also probably see holding down rates so yeah so it doesn't look good at this point in time mm. hi sanjeev good morning uh, what about metals you know that index has popped up in trade at least today but there are still global headwinds uh, that lie ahead however the ferris pricing or steel pricing has been quite strong and as a brokerage house i think you're at upgraded tata steel your view on the metal space and between ferris and non ferris where's the preference lie so as of now we are somewhat more inclined towards ferris compared to uh, uh, non ferris uh, given the overall supply demand balance but uh, having said that you know the upgrade on tata steel is more on a slightly medium term basis you know at this point in time there's no real catalyst for the stock to you know move up the call is more on the fact that you know you're getting to the end of the in expansion program as far as kalinganagar project is concerned so you will start seeing volume you know uh, pick up going forward uh, and uh, hopefully the profitability uh, has bottomed out and you know uh, even if it does not go much from there the story is more driven by you know volume growth as far as 
Tata Steel is concerned. So not that much, I would say, driven by a great view on the steel cycle, uh, more driven by volume growth, uh, specifically in the case of uh, Tata Steel. <clears throat> Sanjeev, uh... You know, is the way to go about trying to look for opportunities, uh, look for uh, kind of bombed out sectors? We had S. Narain of ICSA Pro uh, with us, uh, you know, a few days ago. I mean, he was talking yeah. about sectors like pharma, uh, which are, which are uh, you know, deeply <clears throat> undervalued. At some point, things will turn. Is that the broad approach, uh, Sanjeev, in a market like this? And the problem is there's still so too much Confusion, yeah, you know, the only sector where valuations are very attractive, I would say, is the financial sector. Mm. Uh, but there the challenge still remains, you have a lot of global uncertainty. So until that clears, you know, people will still continue to, you know, have a negative view on Indian banks. So having said that, Indian banks have got nothing to do with whatever problems we are seeing in the U.S. You know, they fundamentally are in very, very strong shape. They don't have the, you know, the asset liability issues which many of the regional U.S. banks are facing, you know, but... But till that overhang, you know, goes away, I respect, you know, Indian banks will also struggle despite, you know, somewhat uh, deep value for many of the banks. I mean, most of the PSC banks are now down to, again, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 times, you know, one year uh, forward price to forward. Even, the, you know, better quality private banks like Access Bank, they're all down to less than two times the uh, price to book now. So, clearly, there is value out here. Uh, Hopefully, you know, once the global panic starts subsiding as far as uh, U.S. banks are concerned, and uh, you know, some of the, I don't think they are very relevant issues, but some of people are very worried about NIM compression, etc., which is a very well-known fact. So I don't know why that should be such a big concern as far as Indian banks are concerned. So once some of the issues get digested, hopefully you start deteriorating in the banks. Uh, beyond that, to be honest with you, we are struggling uh, as far as you know uh, value is concerned. I mean, pharma, <clears> possibly, <throat> you, know, you just have too much you know, news flow uncertainty over there. I mean, SIPLA looked at value at 1100 and suddenly you had so much bad news out there, right? Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on autos? Uh, you know, there are uh, multiple headwinds which are coming together now. Uh, whether it's, you know, from the 1st of April, you have new emission norm costs which are going to go up. There's the El Nino sure. effect as well. Uh, the sure. rural market has not recovered just yet. And now I think in, in one year's time, even the subsidy uh, as per the fame subsidies which were given on electric vehicles, that could be taken out as well. Um, so what do you do with a space like this? Do you, you know, be cautious here, churn out? Uh, what's the approach? So anyway, we had a very cautious view on most of the auto names following the CV as a tractor space. Uh, even the tractor space uh, will have to be a bit uh, careful. Even the long term story is fine. Violations of uh, MM look fairly attractive. The problem is if you actually have an Elino, then there is no you know, uh, uh, story over here, at least for that particular year. So, yeah, so we have been pretty negative on the two wheeler space, the entire four wheeler space, you know, so uh, continue to maintain that stance. Uh, I think volume numbers are too high as far as the street is concerned. You will see a CEO of burning downgrades over there. Uh, and in that context, uh, valuations are still uh, very, very expensive, I would think. Uh, you need mm -hmm. to see if it be deeper correction most of the auto names. I mean, they have not done much anyway. But I, I still think valuations are on, on the higher side over there. Mm. So I'm cautious on autos then. Uh, you know, Sanjeev, we chatted pre-budget. And at that point yeah. in time, given the fact that insurance companies were underperforming, valuations were fairly reasonable, well... Uh, you will, you, it was looking fairly constructive out there. What's your view yeah. now in in budget 2023? Well, there was a root shock for them out there. But from year on, what do you think about these stocks? Some of them have corrected a good deal even from those levels. I would agree. The you know, valuation is starting to look fairly attractive uh, for them. The impact of order changes you saw in the budget, uh, I, yeah, it's there. You know, it's about, let's say, 5 to 11, 12% as far as uh, premiums are concerned for uh, most of the life insurance companies. But uh, hopefully that's it. You know, what we don't know is, you know, uh, whether you start seeing more changes as we go forward in terms of, you know, government starting to reduce the five like cap, you know, to, let's say, to even lower uh, price uh, uh, policies. So that, you know, will create more uncertainty per respect to the entire space going forward. I mean, the radishes look reasonably attractive. It's a pretty good long-term you know, uh, a story of where given the insurance penetration is still very, very low. Uh, so all that uh, stuff is positive. Uh, just that, you know, the taxation uncertainty which has come with respect to the budget, you know, I don't know how much that extends into the future also. Uh, so just, I, I had one follow-up on the comment you made about autos. You said that, you know, you'll wait perhaps for valuations to get better. 
uh, some of these stocks uh, prospects are still very strong right m m for example i mean it's been doing exceptionally well in the suv space and the stock has fallen 10% in march is this a good yeah. time to be buying well m m is the only one which looks okay that's what i uh, said you know uh, tractor space and the cv were the ones where we were positive uh, uh, yeah the uh, issues are corrected for uh, uh, for uh, m m for sure uh, you know it's still at about uh, I remember correctly you uh, Eleven hundred, yeah, about uh, about about twelve, thirteen times on a twelve-month forward basis for the pure auto space. So not too bad as far as valuations are concerned. I would say um, the issue is in how much discount you want to give for the value of the with the subs over there, sub and associated companies. You know that all that's always a matter of debate. Uh, but yeah, it looks okay. Uh, but the overhang is still the monsoons, right? You know, if you have a uh, actually, you know, uh, monsoon get disrupted. Uh, Volumes will struggle, I would assume. And in that case, I don't think the stock is going to perform. So we will get more clarity on this issue by April, May, whether it's actually having any El Nino or we sort of managed to scrape by for, for one more year. Having said that, you know, weather patterns have become fairly erratic. If you look at even last year, even though we had normal monsoons on paper, the spatial and temporal distribution boats were actually very, very uh, normal. Monsoon started, you know, late, which affected the sowing season, and that late, which, is, which affected the harvesting season. And you had, you know, actually deficient rainfall in the food producing areas. You had uh, an excess mm -hmm. rainfall in the non food producing areas. So some of the challenges, I suspect, will be there in the future, just, just given the challenges of uh, global warming, climate change, etc. Mm. Uh, by the way, market breadth has now flipped. Uh, to uh, 1,000 stocks lower and 950 uh, higher. I mean, the difference was in any case about 150 stocks, and that has just now kind of moved its uh, the lines of crisscrossing. Uh, the Adani Group stocks I highlighted earlier as well. Green is down five. Uh, you've got uh, Power down four, uh, Wilmer down three, Transmission down five, and uh, Total Gas down about five odd percent as well. So that is a pack is lower. Uh, AU Bank is a new one into the mix. BPCL is down a little bit. Oro Pharma is down 1.6. Biocon has done about two and a half. So lots of these names starting to come into uh, the, uh, you know, the losing uh, list. And this is stuff with volumes. Markets right there, just about 30 odd points or so. Uh, so around where it opened. Sanjeev, uh, you know, has uh, your view or your team's view uh, changed with regards to any of these new, new age companies? Have they come to any decent levels? We just had uh, uh, the JP Morgan uh, IT analyst with us who said this is a year of redemption uh, for the, these new age companies. The focus is on profitability, etc. But uh, what's the view at Kotak? No, we like uh, most of them now, given the big correction which has happened. Uh, you know, whether it is, uh, I, I think we have positive views on all of them. Nike, Policy Bazaar, uh, Sumato, all the all the new age companies that we cover, we have uh, buy or add ratings on all of them now. Yeah, so you know, valuation started to look a lot more reasonable, I would say, after the price correction. And as you rightly pointed out, you know, given the focus on profitability, uh, hopefully we are moving in the right direction over there. Uh, you know, the, the fact that you already have a fair amount of industry consolidation, at least in the food delivery space, uh, uh, likely anybody else is coming in. Hopefully the part to profitability there is a lot more uh, shorter. In the other ones, uh, Nike is anyway uh, profitable. Uh, BB Pentech, you know, uh, if you exclude the the offline business, which is a new focus area, the, the tech uh, piece is actually reasonably profitable. Yeah, so we're generally liking the, the space at this point in time, I would say. Okay, all right, we leave it at that. Sanjeev, uh, great speaking with you. Thanks a lot for joining in and, uh, you know, speaking to CNBC TV 18. Let's move on now. Um, as you know, there were certain amendments made in the final